Jason Isidore. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Your discretion is advised. To Just Sports with Sonny Wells. Tonight we have a few people, uh, one new person. Uh, coming back with us is uh, JB, director of the JBL Pro-Am League. Um, in studio also is uh, Smitty. Smitty. As DeJuan Scott's boy. And of course my co-host. For now and forever mo, hey. Mr. Dewan Scott. What's up, fellas? What's up? What's, What's up? happening? All right, all right. Okay, uh, first things first, let's tackle uh, uh, the what I want to think is uh, the uh, featured thing of the day, and that's uh, the return of Mr. Stephen A. Smith. I'm glad he's back. Welcome Drum back, roll, sir. Please. Yeah. So, you know, let's, let's give you a little overview on exactly what went on so we can bring you up to speed and give you our comments. Uh, let's roll that first one. Here's what I mean by that. We keep talking about the guys. We know you have no business putting your hands on a woman. I don't know how many times I got to reiterate that. But as a man who was raised by women, see, I, I know what I'm going to do if somebody touches a female member of my family. I know what I'm going to do. I know what my boys are going to do. I know what I'm going to have to remind myself that I work for the worldwide leader. I'm going to have to get law enforcement officials involved because of what I'm going to be tempted to do. But what I've tried to employ the female members of my family, some of who you all met and talked to and what have you, is that, again, and this is what I've done this all my life, let's make sure we don't do anything to provoke wrong actions. Because if I come or somebody else come, whether it's law enforcement officials, your brother or, or, or the fellas that you know, if we come after somebody has put their hands on you, it doesn't negate the fact that they already put their hands on you. So let's try to make sure that we can do our part in making sure that that doesn't happen. Now, you got some dudes that are just horrible, and they're going to do it anyway. And there's never an, an excuse to put your hands on a woman. But domestic violence or, or, or you know, with... with or whatever the case may be, with men putting their hands on women, is obviously a very real, real issue in our society. And I think that just talking about what guys shouldn't do, we got to also make sure that you can do your part to do whatever you can do to make to, to 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 try to make sure it doesn't happen. We know they're wrong. We know they're criminal. We know they probably deserve to be in jail. In Ray Rice's case, he probably deserves more than the two-game suspension, which we both acknowledged. But at the same time, we also have to make sure that we learn as much as we can about elements of provocation. Not that there's real provocation, but the elements of provocation, you got to make sure that you address it because what we've got to do is do what we can to try to prevent the situation from happening in any way and I don't think that's broached enough is all I'm saying no elements of provocation that's where he tore his ass right there <laughs> sure. you know, I, I, you know I, I, it all depends man on you know I, I, I think I believe I understand where he was coming from and it was it was directed at individuals man it, it, it's just kind of hard to to, I mean, I, I, you know, as a former athlete, we train little girls to say no to boys, but we don't train little boys to say no to girls. And so a lot of times for, for these ball players that, that may not have, you know, male role models in the house, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've heard some serious conversations for some young ladies that have a game plan with dealing with young men you know, and it's a whole other way to stick them up. And, and I think there are, there are some that, you know, learn a lot from Stephen A., you know, um, and, and that was directed in trying to help them 
that have just never been given the proper guidance or full understanding. I mean, these guys are spoiled from junior high school. You know, they, they, you know how do you deal with a relationship when you may have so many, you know, and um, you, you, man, I've, sit, I've literally sat up and watched, I was going to an all-star game one time, man, and watched a plane full of women calculate how much money they would receive <laughs> <laughs> if they came back pregnant. Mm. One came back with twins. <laughs> Have you heard you know, so, of the turkey baster? Yeah. I didn't know anything about Unfortunately, that. Unfortunately, I have. <laughs> What's that? You know, The turkey baster. Let me tell you what that's about real quick. Mm. They're careful, having now. sex. You got, you got children listening to this now. <laughs> I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're having sex, and uh, they have safe, protected sex. And so the woman will volunteer to take care of the condom and its contents. So she disappears. And what she does is she takes it, knots it up, puts it in the refrigerator. Then after he's gone, she opens it back up, gets the turkey baster, sucks it out and skeets it up in her. So the refrigerator's a sperm bank now. Yeah. Watch out now. Watch out. I'm like... May told me that. I was like, what? They doing the turkey baster. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, I, I look at it from a different perspective. I think we all speak on things that uh, are based on how our own personal experiences. Stephen A. is a black man, but he's talking to a mixed audience. And uh, black women are more confrontational than uh, any other race I've dealt with. And I think he was speaking because he mentioned his family, his sisters, his boys. You know, they're all kind of Afro-American. They're black. And they speak from that experience. But he has to always understand who he is speaking to when he's on ESPN. And it was a white lady that spoke out. It wasn't a black lady. Black ladies know they are confrontational. Yeah. it's many women. Not everyone, but, Well, you know. see, the consciousness goes back. You know, I'll just reference it to the OJ situation. Ever since then... Uh, you have to really think about what you're saying on the air because you have women that are just tuned in and any slight uh, conversation about provocation and implying that they're responsible for it, <laughs> they're going to jump all over you. Exactly. They forget about the context that you set it in, and they're taking words and developing their own definition of what you were trying to say. That's right. Now, in harmony with what that thought he just said, uh, uh, some of us, you know, and I appreciate it very much, we like that fiery confrontation, you know. <laughs> some of us like that. We prefer that. And it's on guard, but, you know, when it becomes into the public eye, you, you just have to, you know, what remains in closed doors, they say. Well, you know, Stephen A is Stephen A. Uh, uh, I learned about Stephen A. long before Stephen A. was Stephen A. He was a patron of mine at the shop. Magic turned me on to him, and he was coming pretty regular when he was in town when he was with the Philadelphia Inquirer. So he's always been opinionated. And um, I, I just think that what was said was tr truly came from inside him. He wasn't trying to ruffle anybody's feathers just what he thought about that particular situation mm -hmm. but espn said you don't get to venture off into that mm -hmm. stay away from that and uh look why don't you take this week off come back and holler at us next week were we able to find that clip on his first day back mm -hmm. rats mm -hmm. i sure wanted to see that uh what's that the, okay yeah well let's let's play the apology and, and see you know Exactly where he messed up, or where he thinks he messed up. Good morning. On Friday, speaking right here on First Take on the subject of domestic violence, I made what can only amount to the most egregious error of my career. While elaborating on the thoughts concerning the NFL's ruling versus Ray Rice, following a domestic dispute with his then fiance, I ventured beyond the scope of our discussion by alluding to a woman's role in such heinous matters going so far as to use the word provoke in my diatribe. My words came across that it is somehow a woman's fault. This was not my intent. It is not what I was trying to say. Yet the failure to clearly articulate something different lies squarely on my shoulders. To say what I actually said was foolish is an understatement. To say I was wrong is obvious. To apologize, to say I'm sorry 
doesn't do the matter its proper justice, to be quite honest. But I do sincerely apologize. As a man raised by the greatest mother in the world and four older sisters, I've religiously spoken out against domestic violence all of my life. I've done so repeatedly over 20 years in this business, as well as over these very airwaves right here on First Take. My primary reason for doing so is because I've experienced and dealt with the matter within my own family. Unfortunately, I did an incredibly poor job of asserting my point of view this past Friday. For that, again, I am truly, truly sorry, particularly to victims of domestic abuse and to my female family members and loved ones I've disappointed and who know I know better. You all deserved a better professional and, quite frankly, a better man last Friday sitting on this very set in this very chair. My heartfelt apologies to each and every single one of you. Stephen A., I appreciate you apologizing. I do. And I think there are people out there who appreciate it as well. Here's the issue with domestic dispute, sexual assault, crimes that are intimate. You use certain trigger words, words like provoke. All we hear is provoke. I haven't been a victim of domestic violence, but I have seen it firsthand. And you can't hear anything else after that. You just hear someone explaining it away or perceived to explain it away. Obviously, that was not Stephen A's intent, as he just said. Uh, he is my coworker. I know his humanity. I know where he was going and what he was trying to say. Obviously, he failed, and he said he failed to do so. As far as Ray Rice is concerned, the NFL, in my opinion, missed a huge opportunity, an opportunity to say we will not stand for domestic violence. Two games is not enough, not enough for me, and I think there should be more, an explanation along with the ruling as to why they were able to only give two games. As for us here on First Take, we all learned a very important lesson, to communicate better. As a lone woman on this show, to speak up, to say what we want to hear and make sure it's being done well. Again, communicate better. That was our lesson. We will try to do better. First Take starts right now. So, um, my thoughts are, uh, I know Stephen A. Uh, well, I reasonably know Stephen A. And he, um, he had no idea this was going to happen to him. Mm-hmm. He was blindsided. I didn't think that uh, he really did anything wrong. But uh, the provocation part, and like the lady said, as soon as she heard that, nothing else was heard after that. So... I'm just glad they didn't fire the brother. You know, he's one of the spokespersons for black people right now in sports. Um, hopefully, they weren't trying to knock him down and say, uh, nigga, stay in your place. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the uh, first day back because I really would have liked to have seen that. I missed it myself. But um, congratulations, Mr. Stephen A. I don't know if you ever see this, but... Congratulations, anyway. Uh, and let's go uh, back to Smitty. Um, Smitty's first time on the show. What did you think of the apology? Uh, I thought he was contrite. I thought he was sincere in his apology. And he recognized that it was uh, the communication problem. You know, his heart was in the right place, but it just didn't come out right as far as the listeners were concerned. I think that saved his job. Yes. Yes, that's that's correct. I feel so also. Yeah, JB. I um I have mixed feelings about it because I personally don't think he said anything wrong and again it goes back to picking out um uh buzzwords which um the lady was right speaking how people just hear what they want to hear because of the the experience that they've had with um with abuse. But um, so I think it was appropriate that he, uh, you know, did the apology. I cried all the way through it because it seemed like it knocked him down a notch when he came back. Because when he when he was talking about it, he was, like you say, speaking from the heart and it was uh, genuine and it was really nothing said wrong per se. But the subject matter was very sensitive. So, yes. I'm pretty sure uh, he's going to keep away from the subject matter. Uh, Dewan, your thoughts, Coach? Yeah, I was able to, to pick out in in his apology that 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 his he was motivated. He said from his own personal experiences, we don't know what that is, you know, and 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 that you know um, 
you know, it's all supposition on our part. So I just have to accept his apology. You know, um, as a matter of fact, I don't have to accept it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I appreciate where he was coming from. You know, I, I heard him on a whole nother wavelength. So he's, he's fine with me. I mean, he's, you know, I, I admire the brother. And uh, welcome back. Yeah, definitely welcome back. I, I don't I don't know. Did you hear Whoopi Goldberg's comment about that situation? Yes, I yeah, did. Yeah, she, and she, she I thought she was going to start fighting one of her co. Yeah, yeah. She said I mean, you, she was like woof, adamant about it. If you Very hit somebody, adamant. expect to get hit back. Right. Yeah. And she was really backing up Stephen A. On yes, that. exactly. You know, basically, she was saying that no, yeah, a man is stronger than a woman, and if you know that as a woman, you know, don't get up in his face, don't slap him. Don't, you know, because you're already involved. If, you, if you've gotten to that point where you feel like touching each other, he's pissed off. And then when you slap him, he got to be a different kind of man at that point. It's that provoke word comes up. <laughs> and, you, and, and that's the correct word, I think. Yes. But on a national arena, you know, you, and, and, and people trying to take you down anyway. Yes. You know, because he's very outspoken. He, you know, I used to hate Stephen. <laughs> Me and you both. Yeah, yes. because and he, he just would... knew everything, you know. And uh, but you know I'm kind of like that, so <laughs> so I kind of you know backed off of it, started listening to him more, and just view it as entertainment. Yes, he is entertaining. Uh, we've got a guy that comes through the shop, um, Morales Stokes. Boy, he's like he's an Uncle Tom. He's an uncle. I was like, man, where did you get that from? What are you What are you talking about? So I don't know if we had the type of job we have. We may have a little Uncle Tomish in us as well. I'm sure he's getting paid well. But once again, uh, my final thoughts on this particular subject with Stephen A. is I'm glad he's back. I'm glad they didn't can him. Uh, I'm glad that uh, the apology was was really heartfelt. It wasn't contrived and like, oh, I'm just going to say what you think, you know, I should say and then get back in here and going back to my old self. Which next week we're going to try and have that that uh, segment where he came back for the first day and see how he really is going to be uh, – flowing there uh mr scott yes you wanted to go in a different direction for the last few minutes here uh, you got something matter of fact i got a little exclusive i had an opportunity to talk to byron scott this week okay and uh you know give him congratulations you know on on that appointment and um you know that, that's that's another thing man um <clears throat> you know hearing his thoughts you know about you know the process and what he has to do and and uh, i hope that uh, sometime in the near future, man, he may drop by or give us a call. We'll see. Yeah, on the Skype. Oh, you know, we didn't, we didn't think about Miguel. We do the Skype. Yeah, and Nigel just arrived back in Belize, so we can Skype with him next week. And uh, I got a couple of more Skype spots for you, man, that are pretty hot hot tickets, and we'll revisit we'll them. You know, I wanted to hear about uh, JB's league. Bring me up to speed. What's happening with the league? Uh, all right. Okay, well, we've been around for 15 years, and um, we started at Poinsettia. I don't know if you're familiar with Poinsettia oh, yeah. and the history yeah, of Poinsettia. Yeah. I, I used to play in that league. Okay, and when I first went over to Poinsettia, I knew nothing about that league. Mm -hmm. And basically, just to bring everybody up on it, uh, Warner Brothers and Motown were across the street from the park. Mm -hmm. And people would come out, the, the, the current actors, I mean stars, would come out and play, just socialize, sit around, eat lunch, kick it, play ball. Outside, not inside, but outside on the outdoor courts. And it was a pretty famous place at that time. And then um, I went there, one of the playground legends over there, I like to say. You remember Provot? Yeah, Pro, I played on Pro's team. Okay, pro, okay, all right. Yeah, Provot so. Dubois, Dubois. Dubois. That's him. Dubois. Exactly. That's him. So he used to come back over there. He, he uh, came back with Marcus Johnson and a couple other folk just kind of checking out the league. And then we had Gilbert Arenas when he was there at the park mm -hmm. when he first went to Golden State. Before he became Agent Zero. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we had uh, Pooh Richardson, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's son, Kareem Jr. And it just flourished from there. Um, then we moved over to Hollywood High. And currently we have Jalen Rose has a team, the game. Uh, Brian McKnight, Katino Mobley comes. Uh, the unforgotten Keith Claus, tall can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, can. He plays but over he's there. He's entertaining to watch though in celebrity games he, and stuff he like that. He is, and he's really changed his whole demeanor. I just, he's, you know, 15 years late, but, <laughs> yeah. or 10 years late, but um, better late than never. Just real quick, man. I remember when he was on the Clippers roster, 
and they they would play they played at the forum, right? Right. And the game would be over, and everybody, you know, that place was golden, the Forum Club, the whole nine Right, yards. I remember. And we all go into our cars, man, about maybe 12, 1 o'clock at night. This brother's a million-dollar player walking across. He's walking. <laughs> <laughs> across the parking he's lot. He's walking across the parking lot. And then at the sports arena, the game is over, and it's like, you know, I'm in the car. I'm talking to A.C. Green. We all, where's this brother going? He's walking across exposition. It's like, where are you? What are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it. He didn't oh, get it. Oh man, he was he was he was cut from a different cloth, man. But yeah, he's, yeah, he's grown up like you say a lot. Yeah, he's grown up and um I'm glad he's taking care of himself. But um so you know, we we we're the best spring league. Drew says they're the best summer league. We're the best spring league. Okay. And uh we used to have current NBA players play with us, but after the uh, collective bargaining agreement, they couldn't play till after June. Mm. So our league is ends at mid June. So we we pretty much get the um, the retired guys. B. Rush used to be a part of it. A lot, a lot of a lot of NBA guys have come through. So now our focus is on more development um, from the high school seniors to the um, uh, JUCO guys. We had about five different types of teams this year from the JUCO and uh, D one guys who are seniors with no more eligibility. Guys from overseas and former pros. What's the most memorable experience you got? Greatest game, greatest play, greatest day. What happened? At the JBL. <laughs> I, I, I want to know his. I want to know his. Well, what, what stands out? One of my uh, greatest things that we do is before each game we have a word of prayer. Hmm. That stands out because what really stood out for me is you wondering if you're touching these guys, and it's a couple of things. It's not just one thing. Uh, the league has been very impactful in the community. And one day I was off to the side, and I like to be in the circle when we have a prayer. And the guy was saying, come on, JB, let's come on to the circle so we could have this prayer. So that showed me what we were doing was working. And then another instance where the game was uh, he came in the circle and um, one of the coaches wanted to pray. And then game said, JB, let me do this. And it was the most remarkable thing because you would not expect that based on his persona that he tried to display. And uh, it was really interesting. And then from then on, he did about three more prayers that season. And that's all we're about. You know, we are black men. We need to come together, dispel, you know, black folk can't get together. And a lot of times they can if you don't have parameters. And I told Game, you know, buy into what we're doing. You're a leader of men. Be a leader of men. And from then on, we haven't had any issues. So I hear Game's got game. He has a little game. You know, he's a spot-up shooter. You know, he's not a contact guy, and there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's not a rough and tough, tough type guy. He sits on the perimeter, pulls up on the three. You know, he was player of the game of his team. When they win, they get player of the game. And he had about 35 points one game. 37. 27. 37, my yeah, bad. 37. 37. I won. announced it, I know, 37. And, won, and hit the three-pointer that won the game. I mean, there's just it's just a good, happy place to be, you know, with family-oriented. You know, it's a little different feel than any other, any other league because I think of the prayer in the center. Now, you know, it would remind you of the Joe Weekly run, shoot, and dunk. Mm -hmm, my year, uh, my day. And, you the, know, I used to – I was, came in in front of Sonny over there. Yeah. Yeah, I was the announcer. Oh, and then okay. Sonny came in. <laughs> and used his equipment. I, I, I played for Hall's Furniture. Okay, I remember oh, yeah, that. What about yeah, three, three or four of those? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hall's Furniture was I remember tough. Paul Me and uh, <laughs> J-Dub and Lester. Man, you had everybody from Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah, I saw him come down and play. Wilt came in. What was the Globetrotter? The Sepp Bell was his name? Yeah, the seven yeah, foot, uh, yeah. How tall was he? Seven, uh, six or seven, five. Yeah, he was way up there. <laughs> oh, George Bell. That was he was the Guinness yeah, Book of yeah, Records. George Bell. Man in the skinny, world skinny like George yeah. Bell. Well, he was way up there. Let me pose a question to you guys. What do you think is different between the players today in their toughness and injuries and the players of yesterday? Because you know, when we, when I used to play, if if asphalt were there, we played on asphalt. If concrete was there, we played on concrete. It was a blessing to get in the gym. And and also, you know, we played every sport in its season. You know, I, I had a conversation with Abdul Rahman, Walt Hazard, Walt Hazard before yeah. he passed. And right. He was telling me about Will Chamberlain. And he was saying, Will Chamberlain, 
in any era would be Wilt Chamberlain. Right. You, got, you could take your whirlpools, your wrap, your tape, your sneakers, your <laughs> right. trainers, <laughs> right. jogging in sand, your medicine balls, everything you got wilt is going to be wilt. And so, you know, for some for some people, it is is just a blessing, it's just a gift of what they have. You know, and other, uh, other individuals is it's you know it's, it's work ethic. You know, they they, they compensate. Go ahead, Smitty. But, but I, I think if the stakes are higher now, though. You know, it's a lot of money involved, so they have to pamper these players. I mean, look what happened with the FIBA incident just recently. You know, uh, mm-hmm. that's going to mess up Indiana's whole season. Yeah. So you have to factor in those variables also. But I think the pampering is what is the problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, because when you play basketball, you work a certain you work certain muscles, and from what I understand, when you play basketball, like i.e. the AAU and whatever, you play that all year round, it stresses out those exact muscles. Yes. Whereas I mentioned we used to play different sports. You move from basketball to football, you, you use different muscles. Yes. Play basketball to baseball, you use different muscles. So you're not really wearing out. I don't think the money per se, I think the money superficially coddles the players and they're still working out. Yes, yes. You know, they're not playing on the court, but they're putting more stress in the workout than they are on the court. Yeah, but then it's a question of fundamentals. I mean, I look at a Dwight Howard, and it's like, how is it you really don't know how to play the center position, and you're making all this money all these years, and you don't have a go-to move? You know well, what I'm saying? You're well, just surviving the, on athleticism. That's the problem now, um, the way I see it personally. You've got ball players who are coming up now who are being taught by – people who haven't played the game uh back in the day uh let's let's go from the 60s to the 70s from the 70s to the 80s most ball players in grade school were taught fundamentals yes uh, everyone in here knows fundamental basketball and, and wanted to first. learn and even the engineer raised his hand yeah. <laughs> they know fundamental <laughs> basketball learn fundamental. and what happened was and one came in mm. Mm-hmm. And one changed the game. You didn't have to be fundamental anymore. You had to be flashy. A la I, Allen Iverson. Yeah. And, you know, and Iverson came in and did his thing, you know. But, golly, now you're stuck with a bunch of guys in the league who, first of all, uh, don't know the fundamentals. They can – their athleticism is, is really, really good. They can do one or two things really well. Yes. And so they rise above their peers, and they kind of slip into the league. I think San Antonio put on a perfect uh, demonstration of what fundamentals can do for a team. I love that team. Yes. That was a great series. Oh, it was. And so if if you get more teams that start using fundamentals at the pro level, then those will be the teams that are going to win. And, you know, the kids are bigger, they're stronger, they're faster, um, and they just don't work out the way they need to. Sometimes they get uh, premature injuries um, because they just don't have the strength they need to have for the type of things that they want to do. Exactly. So, and, and that's, that's unfortunate because, you know, if you're playing, like when we played outside, your body finally develops to learn how to play on that concrete. Yeah. You know? Yeah, your knees will be messed up later on, but you, right then you can play. You can sky, you can do everything. I got messed up knees. I don't care because I used them when I needed to use them. But had they had the proper training, say, for instance, uh, you know, a life cycle or uh, in on the beach and all of that, Crenshaw High, they had this machine called the the kangaroo jumper. Yep. The leaper. Yep. I worked out on that thing. Yep. You never get hurt. If you work on that, you'll never get hurt. Willie West practices, you wouldn't get hurt. Let me tell you. <laughs> no. <laughs> they never hardly had anybody hurt because oh, they man. took care of all of that. Conditioning. They conditioned and they were strong. Oh, my man, tell me that's it. Hey, fellas, we want to have you back here again next week. Uh, Sonny Wells, Just Sports will be Just Sports and Cuts pretty soon. We'll bring you some segments from the barbershop. Uh, we want to thank Pitbull. We didn't give him a, a, a commercial, but Pitbull, our sponsor, for all of this. Thank you, Pitbull. Um, thank you, Smitty. Thank it's you, JB, and my co-host, Mr. Scott, and our uh, great engineer here. We'll see you next week. Just Sports, Sonny Wells.